You hear that? That whistling sound? Boy, that sure is weird music. That's what Apollo 10 astronaut Eugene Cernan asked his two crewmates as they heard some eerie music-like sounds emanating from the far side of the moon. Launched in May 1969, the Apollo 10 was to serve as a dress rehearsal for the actual moon landing mission. Its primary purpose was to test all the components and procedures that would later be used on Apollo 11. Not much was publicly known about the mission, other than that it went fairly smoothly. But mystifying material on the mission was released decades later. The captured video and sound include shaky footage of the vehicles, static-filled cutaways, and a whistling incident, described by the astronauts as extremely unsettling. Decades later, the cause of the strange sounds is still unclear. A few months before Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made their historic moon landing in July 1969, NASA astronauts Tom Stafford, Gene Cernan, and John Young circled the moon as part of the Apollo 10 mission. Launched in May 1969, it was the fourth crewed mission in NASA's Apollo program, and the second to orbit the moon. The Apollo 10's primary mission was to conduct a test run of all the components and procedures the Apollo 11 would later complete. Apollo 10's call signs had the Peanuts comic characters' names, Charlie Brown and Snoopy. They later became Apollo 10's semi-official mascots. 102 hours and 12 minutes after leaving Earth, the crew of Apollo 10 was isolated on the far side of the moon. During their orbit, the astronauts simulated a lunar liftoff to help test the craft for Apollo 11's landing on the surface. Astronaut John Young was positioned in the command module orbiting the moon. Astronauts Thomas Stafford and Gene Cernan flew the Apollo lunar module. As they flew further behind the shadow of the moon, they'd lost radio contact with Earth for roughly an hour. While they were moving along with their flight plan and having a snack, all three men heard some space-like music coming in over their headsets. Gene Cernan was the first to bring it up, saying, quote, Boy, that sure is weird music. John Young added, quote, We're going to have to find out about that. Nobody will believe us. The sounds were so unusual that the crew pondered whether or not to tell the NASA chiefs. They feared that they wouldn't be taken seriously and would later be dropped from future space missions. Strange and unexplained events happened so often during the Apollo program's missions that astronauts came up with the term lie to fly so they wouldn't be banned from future flights. Fifty years later, it's still unclear what caused the eerie sounds. Space makes strange noises all the time, and music-like sounds have been heard on several missions, not just Apollo 10. In 1979, during the Jupiter approach, the Voyager spacecraft picked up a noise very similar to that which the Apollo 10 astronauts heard when orbiting the moon. Decades later, in 2002, the Cassini spacecraft also captured mysterious transmissions from Saturn. But in this case, there was a more straightforward explanation. When charged particles move through a planet, their magnetic environment is distorted in ways that cause unusual sounds. But since the moon doesn't have a magnetic field, nor an atmosphere, the sounds that Apollo 10's radio picked up couldn't have come from the moon itself. The Apollo 10 mission's moon music incident was initially classified by NASA, but in 2008 they released the mission's transcript. Still, the actual recording of the noise was kept under wraps until the audio files were released online in 2012. The transcript and sound were popularized on social media after a show called NASA's Unexplained Files discussed the outer space music. The documentary brings up the theory that radio interference is to blame for the strange occurrence. The Apollo 10's crew was interested, and perhaps a little perturbed, by the eerie music coming in through their headsets, enough to at least mention it to each other. But none of the men let their concern distract them from the job at hand. They continued photographing craters on the moon, updating their flight plan for when they finally reacquired communications with Houston and even mentioned getting a snack afterward. Astronaut Young tried to explain the mystery away. The Apollo 10 mission was the first to take two spacecraft with a radio communication system for each. Young suggested to his crewmates that the noise was probably nothing more than radio interference between the two spacecraft. NASA's explanation agrees with Young's theory. The radios placed on the command and lunar modules were thought to be interfering with each other. Since they were very close to each other, this provoked a strange sound like the one a cell phone makes when you hold it near a speaker. However, Apollo 15 astronaut Al Warden disagrees with the radio theory. He has said, quote, Logic tells me that if there was something recorded on there, then there was something there. Two months after Apollo 10, Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin, the Apollo 11's crew, also heard the eerie music. In fact, according to Collins' 1974 memoir, Carrying the Fire and Astronauts' Journeys, they'd been warned ahead of time. In the book, 
He stated that NASA radio engineers had told him that the strange whistling sounds were nothing more than interference between the radio in the lunar module and the radio in the command module. Still, Colin said that it had been disturbing to hear those sounds while far away from Earth, saying, quote, Had I not been warned about it, it would have scared the hell out of me. A strange noise in a strange place. When the astronauts heard those strange noises, they were on the far side of the moon. This means that, since they had lost radio contact with NASA, they were on their own. No one on Earth could see or hear them. More interestingly, the incident wasn't discussed publicly by any of the three astronauts. It's unclear if they discussed it with engineers. Science and space reporter Sean O'Kane believed that the men's silence was due to a fear of projecting anything other than a strong and stable psyche. Any indication that they'd lost their confidence, let alone their sanity, during the flight might get them grounded from missions forever. O'Kane wrote, quote, Many astronauts and test pilots adopted a lie-to-fly policy, knowing that the slightest crack in their steely demeanor might be enough for NASA to ground them forever. The thing is, no matter how prepared you might be for a trip into outer space, the smallest things can weigh heavily on your mind. Apollo 10 was the first lunar mission to carry the lunar module, which the crew used in orbital tests as a rehearsal for Apollo 11. The three men's testing was so detailed, and similar to what Apollo 11 was going to carry out, that the fuel tanks were purposely kept only partly filled so that they wouldn't be tempted to actually land on the moon. The mission also set several world records. It was the fastest vehicle in history at the time, with a top speed of 24,971 miles per hour while returning to Earth. It also reached the highest altitude of a manned flight, at 220,820 nautical miles. It was the first of two Apollo missions with an all-experienced crew, and the only one whose members flew on subsequent missions. To date, the exact origin of the noises mentioned in the Apollo 10 recordings remains a mystery, as many remain unconvinced of the official explanation.